In the previous video, we saw a one step of gradient descent on one training example for logistic regression. In this lesson, we will uh, further continue with that concept and we will uh, go further by doing it on M training examples. So let's have a brief recap of uh, logistic regression for M examples. So uh, this M is the number of training examples. This superscript I denotes ith training example. And you can see that we are calculating the loss function, what we did in last class. And uh, this is the loss function for IA training example. And we are adding it for all the M training examples and then taking the average and we get the cost function. So you see the difference, cost function, loss function. And then uh, IA uh, estimate this y hat i is the estimated value of y, y i is the actual level, actual y, and this is the estimate, is given by this sigmoid of z i, and here this g i is w transpose x i, and this x i is a vector of features. In our example, we took n equal to 2, where n denotes the number of features, so this vector was x1, x2, just two features. And if we are looking at ith uh, training example, we will add this superscript i everywhere. And we have a dummy feature x0, which is multiplied with this b. And this x0 always takes a value of 1. So we don't write it here. And uh, once we have done this, uh, we had calculated the derivative of this w1, w2, and b with respect to the loss function for this single example. So we had seen this for single example. And we will use this concept here and we will use these values. So let's uh, do it for M training example. So what changes we need? So in this case, we will calculate uh, those der derivatives, but with not respect to loss function, which is for single training example, but for the cost function. So we will be calculating del j which is a function of wb over del w1 and we will be working with n equal to 2 case that is two two features so we will calculate this as 1 over m same way the average i equal to 1 to m and uh, then del wi let's make it general and loss of ith predicted value and ith actual value. So this we will do for all the w's and also b. So let's begin. What we will do, uh, we will run a loop from 1 to m. So here m denotes the number of training examples. So we have to loop from 1 to m and we will keep accumulating these values. So we will not we will divide it in the end once we we start the loop 1 to m and here we will have some variable accumulator where we will keep adding these terms what we calculated here in the previous example this these terms so this is x1 a minus y this is x2 a minus y and this was a minus y so we will keep accumulating these into some accumulator and finally after the loop ends we will divide each of them by 1 over m to get our actual values. Also we will uh, keep accumulating these losses inside some accumulator and ultimately we will divide it. So this summation denotes the accumulated value of this entire for loop and then we will divide it by 1 over m. So let's begin. So let's initialize those accumulators. For j, we will use j itself. For uh, this uh, del w1, for the accumulation of this, we will use some variable, let's say dw1. This does not make any difference. You can give your own name like uh, w1 derivative accumulator or some more meaningful name. I will denote it with capital DW1 
and similarly dw2 equal to 0 and finally db equal to 0. Now for i equal to 1 to m do what we will do we will calculate ith j w transpose xi plus b then what will be ai sigmoid of zi and once we have done that let's add the loss to the accumulator and the loss is defined as yi log ai plus 1 minus yi log 1 minus ai once we have added the loss to this accumulator for cost function uh, we will calculate del l over del z since it's required for the calculation of both w1 w2 and also b here you can see del l over del z it will be used here also here also because g is linked to w1 w2 uh, x1 x2 and b all of these and this value was equal to a minus y so it will be a i minus y i and uh, then we will calculate d w 1 so we will accumulate the derivative of uh, w 1 with respect to loss into this and ultimately we will divide it so it's uh, x 1 i times this value so we can write ai minus yi or you can write this whatever you prefer and similarly del w2 x2i and same thing and finally db plus equal to and b is you can see this is 1 so del z over del b is same as uh, a minus b 1 times del l over del z so it's straight away ai minus yi all these three terms are here and now this loop ends so we can end here and here you can see it will be done for all the weights here we had n equal to 2 but if we have more n more features then it will be done for dw1 dw2 dw3 and so on and uh, finally once we are out of this loop we will do uh, j equal to j over m this is the accumulator for j we have been adding all the losses for each training example and uh, then we will have del j over del w1 this will be del w1 this was the accumulator over m similarly del j over del w2 equal to dw2 over m and del j over del b it will be db over m now we have these values del j over del w1 del j over del b and del j over del w2 so we are ready to make a uh, one step of gradient descent how we will update w1 we will update three things w1 w2 and b if we have more features we will update all of those w's and b so w1 equal to w1 minus learning rate del j over del w1 and w2 will be similarly w2 minus alpha times del j over 
del W2 and B will be B minus alpha times del J over del B. So this is just one step of gradient descent for M training examples. Uh, in order to, we will make repeat this again and again for making uh, other steps. We have to take multiple steps before it converges. Uh, but with this approach, you see there are a few problems. You see that this is the outer loop and how many times this executes? M times and M is the number of training examples. And we know that uh, for deep learning problems, this uh, M can be very large. It can go even up to 50,000, 100,000 or even million in some cases. So this outer loop is very large. And here you can see a inner loop. Here he, N is just two, so you are not noticing it, but it's a loop in itself. If we had, let's say thousand features, then you will do that for DW1, DW2, DW3 and so on till thousand. So there is a loop here also for i equal to 1 to n or i is here, so j equal to 1 to n. So you see outer loop m times, inner loop n times. So overall it will be m cross n times. And uh, in our deep learning algorithms, we, we see that if we are using explicit for loops uh, and we make the algorithm run like that, then it's not running efficiently. It will take much more time. Uh, and there are that's why there are some techniques called vectorization technique, which we will see in later lessons. And there we get rid of uh, these loops completely. And uh, before deep learning era, vectorization was considered to be a uh, good to have thing because there are these m n values these were smaller so the vectorization techniques did not make too much of difference in performance but in the deep learning era where we are dealing with huge data set uh, this vectorization makes a huge impact and it's very very important